I cannot switch to Linux because I need that and that app. This is one of the many excuses that people tell you if you want to convince them to try out Linux. And they are not wrong. Many programs are just straight up not available on Linux. But let me tell you, just because the developer does not support it, does not automatically mean that it won't run. There are methods out there that can help us to run Windows software on Linux. And I want to put it to the test. If a typical Windows user could just switch to Linux without substituting to a different program. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and let's go. In order for us to execute Windows applications on Linux, we first need to download a tool called Wine. Wine is a compatibility layer which translates Windows specific requests to a certain API into something that Linux can understand. And with it, the execution of Windows programs is possible. But just how good is it really? Let's put it to the test by starting off with one of the most commonly named programs that allegedly keep people on Windows. And of course, I'm talking about Adobe Photoshop. Let's see if we can get it to run. Now the first issue I faced was how do you even get Photoshop? Because Adobe Creative Cloud just cannot be downloaded that easily on Linux. Now there are videos on YouTube on how you can install Photoshop. However, I couldn't get past the installation script because of some random error, which is most likely caused by my distribution Fedora. Now here's the thing, if you manage to get it working, then it actually runs pretty darn well. But that being said, not every single release performs the same. Some might just not work at all. Another big issue for a lot of people, and especially for those who are allowed to bring their own device to work, is the Microsoft Office Suite. While many Linux and open source enthusiasts would just recommend different solutions, which often provide a very similar experience, there sometimes are really valid reasons on why not everybody can switch that easily. If their company uses Microsoft add-ins or macros, not that ideal for security, then they are often out of luck. So let's try to install Microsoft Office and see if it works. Like with Adobe, Microsoft also has a problem with letting you download the installation file from their website. So the easiest way to download Office on Linux is just to use Windows and download the installer from there. Not really ideal. But in contrast to Adobe, Microsoft does allow for the download of the installer. And while the installer is also able to launch, unfortunately it fails due to some features not implemented in Wine yet. However, as with Photoshop, older versions of Microsoft Office work just fine. Okay, so more recent Office versions are kind of a problem and the more integrations are being used, the less likely it is to even work at all. Next up, we have something for gamers. If you have a headset or a gaming mouse, then you might use a tool like Logitech G-Hub to configure it to your liking. And to be honest, I have no clue if Wine even detects USB devices. So let's find out. Logitech g -up fails to install. Hmm. Seems like when it comes down to configuring peripherals on Linux, we are pretty much stuck with third-party solutions. They are not bad. They just sometimes miss certain functionalities. Or can be a bit confusing, like are the current settings stored on my mouse or the PC? Do I have to keep the program running all of the time? A solution from the official hardware vendor would be great. And I don't think that Logitech G-Hub is in any way secretly improving your mouse's performance, so why the hell is that not open source? Anyway, next up, something for streamers. Configuring audio interfaces. Many streamers and YouTubers use the GoXLR, which is a pretty awesome piece of hardware. You can easily mix different sound sources, like separately controlling your game sound from background music, which allow for some pretty cool effects. And you have a bleep button for some less family-friendly content. I even have my f button. I have something similar, just a bit less powerful. My PreSonus Revelator IO44 has a similar feature set, but also needs a custom software to fully spread its wings. So, does it run? Well, yes, but actually no. Probably again due to USB devices not being passed through. Hmm. So unless you want to build your own audio rerouting application or simply templates with Pipewire and Pulse Audio, then you're pretty much out of luck if you want to use one of the most common and cheaper audio interfaces. Okay, okay, not everyone is a content creator or a gamer. So what about other applications like a PDF reader? What about Adobe Acrobat? Some companies buy licenses for extended features, so that one should work at least, right? Okay. 
here it is. Even though the reader installs just fine, it isn't entirely sure about your system configuration and wants to open the program in protected mode, but I'm just going to select always open with protected mode disabled and hit OK. And it seems like it works. Oh, another thing that Windows heavily promotes nowadays are apps. So what about WhatsApp or Spotify? Well, that's an interesting one. Some apps are actually natively supported, and those who aren't often have a web alternative, which essentially is the exact same thing. Sometimes you can even install them as a progressive web app, or short, PVA. And then it is exactly like a local installation. So regarding app functionality, you're not missing out on anything. Pretty awesome. So now, where do we stand? Some Windows programs run, and they run really well. Sometimes, however, they have limitations, and some just don't run at all. But I think with this video I have proven that people who need certain applications to run on Linux can indeed switch, if they can afford some downtimes, slower processing, or older versions. So it's still not really a substitute for a highly productive environment. The question is always, what do I need, and why do I need it? The need for Photoshop is often exaggerated. Most people really just don't need it and they could easily achieve the same results with something like GIMP. Others, however, might need it for a plugin or a certain not that commonly used feature, which does not have an alternative. Gamers and streamers also might be able to substitute certain programs and features. But it also depends. Are you someone who often changes their DPI? Not that much of a problem. Do you often use your mouse on different PCs? Well, sometimes it's a bit uncertain if you save the settings to the mouse or the PC. So yes, is it just a cheap excuse that people cannot switch to Linux due to a program not working? In a lot of cases, definitely. But for professionals and other work-related stuff, they sometimes really have no choice. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like. And while you're at it, also make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Thanks! Another video? Another video. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.